وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I want you today إن شاء الله تعالى to go through a very small part of the first verse of سورة القمر I just want you to cover اقترابت الساعة and not even وانشق القمر just اقترابت الساعة but before I do that this surah why did it come down what's the sabab nuzul the reason of his revelation Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه he mentions أن أهل مكة the people of مكة سألوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم they asked the prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم أن يريه أن يريهم آية they asked the Prophet, they said, Ya Rasulullah. They asked the Prophet, yeah, he said, Ya Muhammad, والسلام, can you show us a sign that proves your prophecy? A sign that, you, that helps you and aids you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he showed them was the splitting of the moon. والسلام. So that's why it came down. But that part of the ayah where it says, One shaq al qamar, I want to speak about it. Maybe another time, inshaAllah ta'ala, after Ramadan is finished, maybe another time to discuss it and to talk about it and all the doubts that the Orientalists and the Christians and the disbelievers have thrown regarding this. I want to respond to it there, inshallah ta'ala. But the first part is what I want to focus on, okay? Also, I just want to mention something else, which is, brothers and sisters, this surah, يعني surah to uh, Al-Qamar, is a surah which is Makkiyah. يعني it was from the surah that came down in Mecca. Okay? It came down in Mecca. And from the virtues of this surah is that Abi Waqidin al-Layfi, radiallahu ta'ala, and who he mentioned, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yaqra'u that the Prophet used to recite it fil Eidi. In Salat al Eidi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to recite the first raka'ah, he would recite Surah Qaf. And the second raka'ah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite Surah Al Qamar, Surah Iqtarabah. Okay? The name that's given to it is two names Surah Al Qamar, some scholars they call it. And that name, of course, is in the ayah Wan Shakal Qamar. Also, some scholars, they call it Surah Iqtarabat al-Sa'ah, or Surah Iqtarabat. Those are the two names that are given. And the Surah is a Makkiyah Surah. I already mentioned to you the reason why it came down. The Surah, it focuses on five main points. The first thing it talks about is, which is the part that I want to talk about today, is that it tells the people that the hour is very, very close. And in there, it also talks about the splitting of the moon and uh, as the first point which is a sign not only for Nabi Muhammad's prophecy, but it's also a sign for the hour as well. يعني, the splitting of a moon or the moon يعني, is a sign of the hour. Okay? Which Allah wa ta'ala was trying to show this as a warning for the disbelievers of the truth and the resurrection and the day of judgment. As Allah wa ta'ala he mentions in the surah, he says, اِقْتَرَبَتِ السَّاعَةِ وَانْشَقَّ الْقَمَرِ وَإِنْ يَرَوْا آيَةً يُعْرِضُوا يُعْرِضُ وَيَقُولُ وَيَقُولُ سِحْرٌ مُسْتَمِرٌ Until Allah تعالى, He says مُخْطِعِينَ إِلَى الدَّاعِ يَقُولُ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا يَوْمٌ أَحْسَنٌ That's the first part. The second part that the surah talks about is again warning the mushrikeen and the disbelievers of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, those who don't believe in him that the punishments that have come to the previous disbelievers that were similar to you guys who disbelieved in Nuh and Ad and Thamud and Qawmulut and Al Fir'aun, Allah mentions them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah wa ta'ala, he said, كَذَّبَتْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ فَكَذَّبُوا عَبْدَنَا وَقَالُوا مَجْنُونٌ وَزْدُجِرْ Until Allah wa ta'ala spoke about يعني, the other prophets. يعني, أَكُفَّارُكُمْ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أُولَائِكُمْ أَمْ لَكُمْ بَرَاءَةٌ فِي الزُّبُرْ أَمْ يَقُولُونَ نَحْنُ جَمِيعٌ منتصر. سيهزم الجمع ويولون الدبر بل الساعة موعدهم والساعة أدها وأمر إن المجرمين في ضلال وسعر يوم يسحبون في النار على وجوههم ذوقوا مس سقر يعني الله منشز إذن. The third thing Allah تبارك وتعالى he talks about in this surah is 
how Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has favored this this nation, how Allah has favored this the 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 ummah by bringing them a Quran which is easy to digest. The wording is so easy, the meaning of it is so easy. The fourth is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ability over everything and everything is going to come to an end. Okay? When he chooses to make it come to an end. That Allah has encompassed everything in knowledge, in ability, strength and power. When he says, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqanahu biqadr wa ma amruna illa wahidatun kalamhin bilbasar wa laqad ahlakna ashya'akum fahal min muddakir wa kullu shay'in fa'aluhu fi zubur wa kullu saghirin wa kabirin mustatar and then the fifth, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He talks about the promise that He made for the mutaqeen, the righteous people, the great reward that's waiting for them, the high position that they're going to receive. In al muttaqina fi jannati wa nahar. And then Allah says after that, fi maqadi sidqin inda malikin muqtadir. So those are the five main points Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala talks about uh, regarding this surah, Surah Al Qamar. But what I want to focus today on is just the part where Allah says, as you can see, brothers and sisters, is the first letter that was used in the surah. And there's a difference, brothers and sisters, between qarubat and iqtaraba. There's two different meanings. How? Because the qa'idah nahwiyya, the grammatical ruling is ziyadatul mabna tadullu ghaliban ala ziyadatil ma'na. If a word has more letters than another word, but they come from they all come from the same root word, but one has more letters. The one that has more letters, generally speaking, has more meaning in it. So here, when Allah Taala used and didn't say and he didn't say it like that, it, what is the difference? The difference is this one is actually ablagu. It's even more closer. Allah is saying the hour is excessively close. The word as it means qiyamah. And Allah used it subhanahu wa ta'ala like that in Surah Al-Hajj when Allah says, Ya ayyuha nasu taqu rabbakum inna zalzalata as-sa'ati shay'un azim. Allah refers to inna sa'ata. Inna zalzalata as-sa'ati. Inna zalzalata as-sa'ati. As-sa'ati yani al-qiyamah. That's the first verse of Surah Al-Hajj. The reason why the Qiyamah is called as saa Allah knows best subhanahu wa ta'ala, but some of the scholars, they suggest the reason for it is because لِقُرْبِهَا It's very close. وَتَحَقُقِ وُقُوعِهَا And that it's really going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh yes, it's going to take place. And not only is it going to take place, but it's going to take place at an appointed time. That's why time is used for it. It also has an, يعني, other names. Qiyamah has an, many other names. This meaning of the hour being close, Allah has emphasized it. In the Quran, so has the Prophet Sallallahu in the Sunnah. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, أَتَى أَمْرُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلُهُ In Surah Al-Nahm. And what's amazing is that you actually find a lot of the times Allah mentions at the beginning of surahs. Like for example, Surah Al-Nahl, Allah says, Ata amrullahi fala tista'ajilu. It's the first ayah at the beginning. Surah Al-Qamar, iqtarabati sa'a. It's the first. Surah Al-Anbiya, iqtaraba lil nasi hisabuhum, wa hum fi ghaflati mu'ridun. It's all the beginning of the surahs that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is mentioning this. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Also Allah mentions it Surah Al-Najm, which isn't the first part of the surah. It's Ayah 57. Allah says, Azifa til Azifa. Allah says that subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Saba, Ayah 30, He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ لَكُمْ مِعَادُ يَوْمٍ لَا تَسْتَأْخِرُونَ عَنْهُ سَاعَةً وَلَا تَسْتَقْدِمُونَ When it comes, the time for Qiyamah is coming, Allah will not delay it, subhanahu wa ta'ala, no. And nor will it be brought forward. It's at a time. ولذلك the scholars like Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn al-Kathir and others they mention تواترت نصوص الكتاب والسنة. If you look at the Quran and the Sunnah by multitude, I mean many places. 
it emphasizes on this point that the hour is about to happen. It's going to take place. If the Quran by tawatur, multitude, mass transmission, the Quran does that. And so does the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Then why are we taking it as though it's not going to happen anytime soon? Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا وَنَّرَاهُ قَرِيبًا He's actually saying this to us. They see it, the people, us. What do we see it as? We see it as something that is far. Qiyamah, yawmul qiyamah, the day of judgment. We see it as to be something very far. Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ يَرَوْنَهُ بَعِيدًا They see it to be far. وَنَرَاهُ قَرِيبًا We see it to be close. Allah Taala told us in the Quran, "فَهَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا السَّاعَةَ أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَقَدْ جَاءَ شَرَاطُهَا." Are they waiting for the hour to just come suddenly like that at them? The signs have already come. The signs have already come to them. Allah said, "فَقَدْ جَاءَ شَرَاطُهَا." The signs of it has already come. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, as it was narrated, he said صلى الله عليه وسلم in يعني a narration that was mentioned by Sahl ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi رضي الله تعالى عنه the Hadith الإمام and Bukhari narrated in his Sahih, and also Imam Muslim narrated it. Bukhari, in Kitab al Raqaq, he brings it. Qawlu Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the chapter where he said, Qawlu Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bu'ithu ana wa sa'atu kahatayni. And an Imam Muslim, he brought it in Kitab al Fitan, wa sharatu sa'ah. Ahmed also narrated the hadith. Hadith Sahl ibn Sa'ad al Sa'idi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Sahl ibn Sa'ad al Sa'idi say, I heard the Prophet say, Bu'ithu ana wa sa'ah kahadihi. And the Rawi of the hadith, Sulaiman ibn Mehran al A'mash, actually told the people by how it was, which is he emphasized and showed him. Yani, and the narration itself mentions that, وَقَرَنَ بَيْنَ السَّبَّابَةِ وَالْوُسْطَى The Prophet did this. Look at that, brothers. Those two fingers he put together. What's the, yani, the distance between these two? That's the distance between the Prophet وسلم, coming out as a Prophet and the hour. Imagine that was 1,400 something years ago. Yeah, brothers and sisters. Now, some of you might say to yourselves, we heard some narrations where the Prophet ﷺ said that the hour will not strike until this person passes away or something like that. Anyone who dies, brothers and sisters, his hour starts. Man mata qamat qiyamatu. That's how the hadith should be understood. If you go into your grave, that's your qiyamah. The qiyamah is what's going to start for you then. The, you're in another world, in another place. You're not in the dunya anymore. Your qiyamah has started. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.